What's up? Awesome. There we go. It's actually kind of sad if like the social media marketing girl could not figure out how to do an Instagram live. I'm actually a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't be embarrassed. And you may have been in here and I didn't notice there was like a few people. So um, I saw you all over the place uh, this past week with Blackstone, PJ and at the gym and, and you're, you're, you know, taking over a very important role. But before we talk about that, uh, maybe tell folks a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm fairly young. I'm actually fresh one year out of college. So um, I'm 23. And I went to the Fashion Institute. So you're like, okay, like Blackstone Labs, like hardcore bodybuilding, like, how did this Fashion Institute girl like get this job? And I came from a company originally called the Shoe Fairy, which is women's bodybuilding competition heels and accessories. So super girly, lots of pink, girls in bikinis, but you know, it's all kind of the same thing. And marketing at the end of the day is marketing. I mean, we're just selling something. But um, I always had a love and a passion for bodybuilding. I'm a competitor myself. I got into the gym and training my freshman year of college. And then from there, lost some weight. People were telling me, you know, you got to hop in a show. And I was like, a show? Like, what are you, what are you talking about, a show? So I did um, my first competition in August of 2019. Then I was in prep for another one when COVID happened. And I live in New Jersey. So we got hit really hard with the pandemic. And then um, actually just did my third or my second show, my third prep um this uh past july so i just was down in uh fort lauderdale right by nice. their base in boca and um things just kind of you know like linked up so really what had happened how i got the job at blackstone too while i was doing shoe fairy i was um like kind of hustling on the side doing you know lots of different projects and i met up with um v the makeup artist who's a good friend of PJ Braun. And um, when PJ had announced that he was looking for a new graphic designer, she sent our, she sent my info to him. So that's kind of how that all came about. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, you know, uh, I've got like this little text group with PJ and Jen Strobo and she's yeah. like, yeah, she's really awesome. She went to FIT and I'm thinking FIT, does he mean FIU or FI, you know, because FIU is Florida International, but I didn't know what FIT was. So, so yeah, that's amazing that you went to, uh, to, uh, to FIT and that's super cool because, you know, I think graphic design, I think marketing, I think fashion, it, it all ties in, you know, I mean, it all ties in. The fitness industry is a very glamorous industry and, you know, um, marketing is so important. I, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. You know, one of the things I'd really like to see is more interaction from the Legion. You know, um, we've got 10,000 plus followers, but like a lot of posts got like 30 likes. I'm just like, what? You know, you can blame the algorithm all you want, but the thing is, is like at the end of the day, it's about engagement. You know, uh, Blackstone Labs every month is sending out 100, $150, $200 worth of supplements. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion, if it was up to me, I'd crack the whip a lot more. When you crack the whip, there's, you know, there's blowback with that. Sometimes people get very upset, but it's like Blackstone gives so much and we ask for so little in return, like, you know, watch a live or comment on someone's post or double yeah. tap or something. And it's like, people are really, really lazy, you know, but I think it's also that they need to be, you know, inspired. They need to be engaged and that once you get that attention, you need to retain it. And that's where I think marketing really comes into play. Yeah, and you guys have the different tiers too, though. Like they have incentives where if they do more, they get like more product. This is kind of right. what I'm yeah, about. yeah. So, so tier one, uh, everybody starts out at tier one. I mean, everybody, and some people have a real problem with that because they're like, well, you know, I'm I'm this or I'm that. I've done this. I've done that. Like they they want to start at tier two or tier three, and it's like if if you're if you're gonna rise above, if you're gonna like be the best of the best, you're gonna be the best of the best whether you start at level one or we baby you and start you at level two or three. So I, I'm, I'm just a firm believer, everybody should start out the same. And if you're that good, you're gonna get all the way up. But yeah, so level one starts out, they get $100 of in-store credit. Uh, they've got to put up five wall posts and 10 stories. And then level two, what's cool about that is then now you're getting percentages of commission, but you also have to, you know, uh, have more interaction. Then tier three is handpicked by PJ. A lot of tier twos want to be tier threes, but there is no, graduation to tier three he'll pick you and uh and that's just based on i think uh consistently showing that you're going above and beyond there's no like you know specific window okay you're going to be tier two for a month or tier two for 90 days it's not like that he will pick you and so um 
Yeah, and, and I think, you know, aside from the supplements and aside from the money, because there is money to be made, I mean, there's people that are like, you know, like Kay Graham or Jenna Geary who could, you know, really, really bring in sales and make a lot of money. But I think it's the exposure as well. It's, it's being, you know, uh, reposted. It's being sponsored, supported by probably the last real hardcore bodybuilding supplement company there is, because there's a lot of cookie cutters out there. Yeah. And that's not what we are, so. I love that. Yeah, that's really cool. Another thing that I do for the shoe fairy is I do uh, man our influencer marketing. So we do affiliates and we do have sponsored athletes as well. So I guess like with Blackstone, I'm kind of dipping into the Legion with making them their uh, graphics to add their codes. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of familiar with that sort of thing. But with Shoe Fairy, I'm actually managing the athletes, the affiliates, making sure that they're hitting their sales and everything. So that's like really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I run the Legion. I've been doing it just a couple of months, two or three months. I keep saying a couple of months. It's already been like three or four. But um, I've always, you know, I always wanted to help with the Legion. Uh, my predecessor, you know, had a really strong relationship with them, knew them by their first and last names and was just, you know, he's no longer with the company. But like, you know, I, I, I like working under him. And now I like working on my own. And um, when I saw that they hired you, I was so excited because, you know, I really feel like, you know, Jen Strobo works with the tier threes, and then I work with the Legion, but having you kind of work with everybody and having you, you know, really understand like the value of email, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, email is dead. It's all about DMs. And that's really not because email is still very, very powerful. And I feel like it's a lot more serious than say a DM or a Facebook inbox message. An email is still the more professional method of communication, I think. Yeah, and the numbers show, you know, it's, it's doing something. It's still bringing in sales and people say that it doesn't work not true like people in great for like engagement and kind of like catching or as you're scrolling you're like oh yeah I order that protein powder or man that looks really cool but email is like what's coming directly to you so you could really sit through go on the website sift through like the catalogs so yeah for sure and you know the shoe fairy is a company that i honestly think they, they've really i mean everybody's heard of them there's plenty of knockoffs to try to be them. And you know that that's a sign of success when you've got companies that like their whole purpose is to copy you and, 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 and they fail miserably at it. So, I mean, I think it's a, it's a very, very strong company. It's a very strong brand, you know, and I, I think a lot of that too. I mean, I think sales are really important, right? But like, I think that uh, name recognition is as well. I mean, everybody's heard that name, like everyone's heard Blackstone Labs. So, you know, there's value in that too. So cool. I love being a part of both. I, I like live and breathe bodybuilding. Like I might not be like the best competitor myself, but I am just so inspired by other competitors, by fitness. Like I live for this. I think it's so cool. So it's very nice to work in the industry too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, even, even like the quote unquote best, I mean, it's a subjective sport. So I mean, even the best may not be the best, you know, from one show to the next, but it's like, it's just, I guess the, uh, the uh, the drive to be the best you not to sound cliche but there there's so much of that like i'm doing a transformation and like even at the end of the transformation i'm still gonna be a, like like a fatty but <laughs> i will have lost so much and i you know it's, it's 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 all about achievements i think you know and i think that's where people like especially the bodybuilding sport side of it uh people don't understand like why would you like sacrifice so much time and effort for a five dollar trophy and yes it may be a five dollar trophy but it's a trophy that that you want, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, it, it, it means something to the other people on that stage. If it means nothing to anyone else, that doesn't matter, but it means something to the people, everybody that, that embarked on that journey alongside you in various parts of the country, that means something, you know what I mean? I think, I think that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I'm reading the comments coming in. It's just so oh, that's good. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm really bad at reading comments. I'm, I'm very actually not good at that at all, but, um, <laughs> so you actually go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying everybody's so nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. They are super cool. And, um, you know, I like I said, I just wish that we had more. And sometimes it, you know, the thing is, I get frustrated, you know, because I'm a guy and, and such. And so like, you know, I, I don't really process it. But like, the thing is, is like, I think marketing is such an important thing. I think what you're going to do, not to put pressure on you, but I think what you're going to do is going to be so important. And, and it's all about working together. Like I always tell Legion members, you know, like this past sale that we had uh, for Labor Day, you can work with your call center reps. And there's, the, there's like a big disconnect there. They're like, there's like Legion here, call center here. When in reality, if they work together, you know, they can actually achieve quite a bit. The Legion people still get their commission. The rep, the call center people still get their numbers. It's, it's a win-win. And then the customers save more money, you know. 
Yeah, something that, you know, we should get into maybe, um, I don't know, PJ and Jenner tuned into this, but something that I do with Shoe Fairy, both affiliates and athletes, if somebody wants like a custom graphic for their story, they're like, I want my stage shot on there. I want something custom just for me. They reach out to me through my email and I'll actually separate for them i know that we kind of blast out you know the standard with you know fill in your code but that could be something really cool to get into because it makes them feel special and it's something that they could promote to kind of you know boost their sales and it's, it's a win-win for everybody really definitely and like josh says uh, he uses his call center rep corey for every sale which is really good and like you know the thing is like when you join the legion you get like a uh, a welcome uh, like bundle and one of the things is the uh, graphic maker but the thing is the graphic maker is not so simple to use and sometimes the graphics that legion members make and they're i'm like i'm talking about like it's not an intelligence thing it's just a technology thing because we've got legion members who are doctors and lawyers and engineers and and, and all that but like the graphics sometimes like have a kind of like a flat look to them and so um having you be, you know you being able to help out with that i think is really huge and then also as it's, as a, as the technology advances then that's also going to advance as well but like you know especially when somebody first joins the legion like the first thing they want to do is tell the world you know what i mean and then thereafter they want to promote their code because codes actually do work just like email works people say it doesn't it does and just like people say codes don't work they do it's just okay. having to market it properly you know yeah absolutely it's very cool so for you, I mean, competing, I mean, you got to compete pre-COVID, but, but you also competed like during COVID. We're still in COVID, but I would say last year was so much more. What was the, all that like for you? I mean, I had a rough time anyway when the gym shut down. Um, I was still living back home, uh, really. So uh, I, I had like nothing to work with. Not that I put on some like crazy sort of weight. I mean, I knew how to eat. I knew how to kind of keep myself in check, so to say. But I lost a lot of muscle, you know. So when gyms opened back up again, I really felt like I like found myself again and was able to get into my flow. And I started working coach back in april we did a 16 week prep together and then i competed july 31st nice that's very cool you know like during those days like uh, pj put out a great ebook and we were doing a lot of like home workout stuff and home workout stuff is great to like stay in shape but i'm sorry home workout stuff is not going to get you ready for the stage i don't think and so in new jersey like you're right it was like one of the more strict states i mean like i think some of your gym owners were getting arrested too and you know granted they were they were pushing the, the card but like you know there were stimulus checks for people i don't think there were stimulus checks for businesses so a lot of businesses went under uh mm -hmm. and a lot of people got arrested just because they wanted to like work which is you know crazy but um yeah so when the gyms reopened you were able to to embark on the prep and how did you do it to show did you did you enjoy competing wow so that was a crazy show so i did janet lay you know like Miss bikini olympias battle the bodies in fort lauderdale it was all bikini you know, like most shows, it's like bikini goes last, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of girls, but like, it's like all the way at the end of the week for hours. This whole show is bikini. Like I competed in novice in the open. The novice class had like 40 people. I was like, good Lord, the novice. It was, it was horrible. I had a great, I mean, you know, I was so proud of myself at the end of the day. Like everyone says you do it for you. Right. But mm -hmm. It, it's really hard when you haven't stepped on a stage in so long. And like the last show that I did was a small Jersey show. You know, I placed third in the open, like it was not that bad, you know, or whatever. Um, and this, you know, was, it was tough, but with uh, the new COVID rules, they made it so that top five nationally qualified or not. Yeah. Nationally qualifies. So I did fifth in the open. Believe I could not believe that I did it. My even my open class had like over 10 people. It was just it was such a huge show. That's amazing. And and to have like 40 competitors and novice is huge. I mean, that's that's unheard of. And uh, yeah, like um, what Rachel was saying, too, is so true. Uh, when it comes to bikini and men's physique, for some reason, the two most prosperous divisions, the ones that bring in the most money, oftentimes go last. And I think the reason for that uh, I think that a lot of times the competitors feel like they're not uh, appreciated. They're not shown respect. Um, and so I get that. But from the promoter side, my thinking, I don't want to speak for promoters, but my thinking is, and uh, forgive me for being vulgar, but they want to keep asses in seats, butts in seats. I guess I could say butts. Yeah. And the thing is when, yeah, when you keep the biggest uh, divisions for last, then it, it kind of keeps that, that packed house feel. Whereas, 
you know, if they put bikini first or men's physique first, by the time the bodybuilders get up there, it's going to be crickets. They're not going to, there's no one's going to be there. You know what I mean? It's, it's good for the show, maybe not so good for the competitor, you know? So, so yeah, I, but, th but it's great though, that this show that you're talking about was all bikini, you know, that that's really cool. And then there's other shows like Whitney Weiser in Tennessee has got the, uh, the all ladies show where it's like, you know, um, only women's divisions, only women judges, you know, which is pretty cool, I think, you know? Yeah, definitely. It was just kind of weird because like all of us are pumping up and they're like, you're on. And we're like, wait, what? Like, we didn't have our food yet. You know, we were so right. confused. And my coach even was like, oh, you must be getting ready now. I was like, dude, no, I got to put my phone down. Like, oh, I'm about to step on stage. Right. He was so, so you know, it was, it was kind of a mess, but it was a lot of fun. Day. yeah that that's like i mean i think that's the most important thing in fact you're nationally qualified is just like the cherry on top i think that's really cool but i mean like yeah for a lot of people even people that have been competing for like years you know uh the uh the sort of like almost felt like hibernation of covid like when they finally got back on stage it was like this was like completely uncharted waters for them even though they they competed so long before it just totally changed everything and i don't think we're totally in the clear like we have uh step loki here from australia and in australia like i mean uh, you know, uh, Rachel, even the most strict laws we had here pale in comparison to theirs, even today, like she can't go beyond five kilometers of her door, like home, or she could get like potentially arrested, which is like insane. Oh, um, so, you know, but uh, so with regards to uh, Blackstone Labs, like uh, I'd be remiss, uh, Chico term, if I didn't uh, ask you, like, what are your favorite products? Everybody's got like, like I'm a like a law guy. I like hype. I love the new unicorn, like not, not the new unicorn, the new isolation unicorn milk is so good. Like oh. I'll stick my head in there and it's like, I'm huffing it almost. It's so good. Yeah. The fruity pebbles. That's so funny. I actually had it today, which is, is awesome. that, is that what it, I was going to say? There's like a fruit loop, fruity pebble, oh. something that, yeah. 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 It has to be like, it's like exactly that like flavor. It's like, like the bottom of the like bowl of cereal, that milk. That's exactly what it's oh, like. It's so good. And and the thing is, it's like, so like, usually like you can't have your cake and eat it too. So usually it'll smell really good, but it won't taste really good or it'll taste really good. It won't smell really good. But like, like, like no joke, this smells amazing, but it also tastes, it's like really sweet. Like I always have fruit loops and cereal and almond milk. That's how I have my day. I start. And uh, I actually, without the fruit loops uh, even without the almond milk just water this stuff tastes like i'm like like you said i'm drinking the the bottom of the cereal bowl so that's really good i don't know like how they did that and what's crazy is that every single isolation has 110 calories so whether it's pound cake butterscotch unicorn milk chocolate vanilla, it's all 110 calories so i that's that's really really cool yeah i've been really happy honestly so you know of course like you start the new job pj you know kind of sent me over a bunch of products to try i've been so happy with everything um, I do love all of the isolation flavors. He actually right now is sending me the pumpkin spice, which I can't wait for. Yeah, that's <laughs> really good. I, I, that's really good. And there's another one. I don't I think it's seasonal. So I don't know if we still have it, but the spooky candy is really, 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 really good. Um, yeah, there's just so many. And, and what's crazy, Rachel, is that back in the day, um, so Blackstone used to have, I believe, uh, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was called Triway. Um, so they had a, they had a, 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 a way concentrate slash isolate product and that really tasted good but it's not so hard to make a concentrate taste good but it's really hard to make an isolate taste good because they're usually like really bitter and just hard to flavor especially when you're not working with sugar and all the isolation flavors like i have not tried one that is not amazing now now granted uh, uh unicorn milk is probably my favorite and then pound cake i thought butterscotch would be but pound cake is really good yeah that's funny i have that one so i got like a whole collection <laughs> right and omni muscle that's right three way yeah, and, and so, you know, but, but the thing is to do it to an isolate, that just makes it so much harder and, and, and they're nailing it, you know, totally nailing it. So, so like, what are your, your favorite Blackstone Labs products, Rachel? Yes, yeah, so you said Glycolog. I am taking Glycolog. But what I was going to bring up is I, um, every, like, even through my whole prep, my coach got me into taking L-carnitine. So I've tried like the pills, the liquids, everything. So now with Blackstone, I'm actually stacking the Carnitrin, which has niacin and L-carnitrin in it and then i'm also taking trojan horse. i'm combining the sweet tea flavor with a sweet tea eaa intra workout so i'm getting like the fat burning effects with the l-carnitine but i don't taste it because i just taste my eaas too so it's like perfect that's awesome yeah the carnitine is a great product like a lot of people love it and again it's it, you know there's stem free ways to uh 
lose weight and gain muscle. Like you had mentioned, Trojan horse, that's a great one. Carnage is a great one. Uh, hype is another great one. Pre-workout, no caffeine. Because a lot of people don't like stims, you know what I mean? They don't, and, and they, but they still want to lose weight, you know? So um, I, think, I think it's a fantastic product. So yeah, Carnage Trim, definitely. So you do Carnage Trim and EAA and the Trojan horse. That's a good mix. Definitely a good mix. Yeah, that's, and I actually have also kind of, you know, been messing a little bit with the Super Stroll, which I don't think necessarily is a fat burner, but I stack that, like, I have my pre-workout meal, I have my Lycolog, I have Super Stroll, I take Cornitrin, I get my Trojan horse ready, my EAAs, and that's kind of like my little workout regimen. Definitely. So when you work out, like, what what's your, like, your typical, like, split like? Like, what do you, do you have a split or do you just kind of play it by ear? I do, yeah. So now we're still in the reversing phase um, before we go into like a full off. I don't plan to compete anytime soon. I got severely put on some muscle. I'm a pretty small girl. <laughs> so um, it's a lot of food and just really focusing on like improving in the gym. So right now, my split is today was um, like chest and arms Monday. Tomorrow will be legs. Um, like my leg days are kind of a mix of like uh, quad and uh, Wednesday's a rest, Thursday's back, Friday is shoulders and arms, and uh, Saturday again, Sunday rest. So two rest days, two leg days, and three upper body, right? And, that, and that's interesting that your two rest days aren't back to back, like say Saturday, Sunday, because a lot of people, they do that. And then it's not so like Tuesday or Wednesday, they're back in the gym. It's just too much of a, it's just too much rest all at once combined with like social outings and, and all that. And they get a lot of people get sidetracked, so it's good. You so it's a Wednesday and a Sunday, so that's that's good. That's good, and uh, a lot of cardio or, or, or not so much. So to be honest, my cardio is actually still really high. Ooh, everybody's gonna be like, "What?" I'm still doing 40 minutes. What do you do though? Like what? What? Uh, like stairs or elliptical or treadmill? <laughs> yeah, like treadmill. Sometimes elliptical if I'm feeling fancy. <laughs> but I'll still like like some like uh, acid, some post-workout. Like I was up to like an hour and a half. So I'm still at like 40 and I'm eating a lot of food. So I'm like just kind of keep dwindling it, you know? No, for sure, for sure. So so what are some things you like to accomplish with Blackstone? Like, you know, like in the short or long term, like what are some things you'd like to, uh, to realize? I mean, right now too, I am doing still very and Blackstone. So I'm, I mean, it's great experience for me, but the ultimate goal would be, uh, you know, PJ, where you at? Uh, go full time and um, really start email marketing, probably send out more email campaigns or just make them better, you know, make them longer, lengthier, more buttons and like blogs, you know, how Jen will do like recipes. We could do more of those, update the blog on because I know that's a little behind um, just really kind of like diving into all avenues social really definitely no I think I think it's great that you came at the time that you did because like you know uh, PJ has mentioned that you know he, he talks a lot about like the inner workings of the companies too which is not something that you know another CEO would probably do uh, but I think it's great um, so there's been a lot of turnover there's been a lot of uh, you know thinning of the herd a lot of people have left or, or sort of been asked to leave kind of thing and and so i just think that right now like a lot of exciting things are happening and i, I i'm confident i'm hopeful i should say but i'm confident as well that uh you know pj will be the case and then once that happens then it's it's he'll be able to focus 100 percent on blackstone which he's not been able to do in a long time because this case is always looming you know and there's other things too like his divorce and 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 of course all of these like hr issues with people that have either left or been asked to leave you know i don't know if anyone's actually been fired but asked or you know you know just trying to be nice but i'm sure people have yeah, been i i filled in on everything yeah so i'm really kind of learning and i came in and i was just like take care of everything that you need to right now i know how to work these programs already which is amazing we use the same email platform at the shoe fairy like what are the odds of that so right. i'm clear just kind of hopped in i'm like let me just focus on this it's one less thing for you to worry about let's get it done yeah, and I think at the end of the day, that's, I mean, I, the goal, I mean, I bother PJ a lot, but the goal, right, is that we, like, bother him as little as possible, you know, because he's got so much going on. And that's something that Jen has told me, like, a million times. But I, I, I you know, I don't talk to PJ at least once or twice a week. I, I go nuts because I just like the connection, you know, I'm his friend too, but, like, and I'm sure you are as well. But but the thing is, is that, uh, yeah, the ideal, the goal would be for him to be as, as, dis, uh, as least disturbed as possible sort of thing, you know, because he's obviously, like, also thinking about new products too, you know, and, um, 
it, it, it's a it's definitely he's got a lot on his plate. Now you though, um, your work uh, aside from this job here, like you said, you so you're not competing again this year, right? No, and it, it sucks because the national qualification I think is only until the end of 2021. But I'm I'm not focusing on that. I, I mean, you guys all know, even in the comments and everything, like when you prep, you have to focus on prep. You know, and I feel like there's too many other things that I even want to do. You know, I want to get back to work and I want to, you know, just focus on other things. Spend more time with my family. You know, when you're in prep, you keep out. Like all of those things are so hard that, you know, I'm not I'm not looking to pursue that right now. No, for sure. And I, th I think that's like a very mature outlook, too, because like you just started this new job and, and you want other work as well. And yeah, competing while I've not done it, I've done so many interviews and, I, and I, I've gotten so many perspectives as a result that it is a very, very selfish endeavor. You don't really have time to do really anything else. I mean, it's the only I think the only person really truly that could probably do competing like year round is probably like a college student. You know what I mean? Like without a job sort of thing, you know, yeah. like something like that. But but even like personal trainer, for example, like everybody's like, oh, you're a personal trainer, you work at the gym. But like most personal trainers, when they're done at the gym, they're exhausted. The last thing they're going to think about is train or let alone prep. So, yeah, it, it's good to, to do it when it when it is right, you know? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, I I do thank you very, very much for doing this. Um, I did uh, have some. Uh, a viper like about an hour ago so i'm a little bit more motor mouth than i usually am but it was a good I, interview that's why i can't do um sims too because look at me i'm bouncing off the wall too i'm like yeah. questions <laughs> i'm yeah. a very big person no for sure for sure but I, listen i i'm super excited and i'd love to like you know brainstorm with you and uh and pj and jenna of course and uh we got chris heron was awesome and and uh, chris the intern's very very good and uh chris graham's been doing a lot of stuff because I, you know, we used to have a, a, a guy that, that was our video guy, but apparently the crazy thing is, is that there was like, from what I understand, there was like a world of video that never saw the light of day and Chris Graham and some other folks are discovering. So there's like just so much content. Like I said, it was, it, it, you're, you're, at a, you're here at a great time. You know, I think a lot of great things are gonna happen. You're very hardworking and, and you're young, you're 23. You've got a whole different way of thinking than myself or PJ or anybody else. I think you're gonna bring a lot to the table you know yeah thank you so much i appreciate it you're based in boca too no i'm i'm in louisville kentucky I, i'm originally from south florida but i live in louisville kentucky so um we're yeah. all yeah we gotta so, have a party sometime and bring everybody in jersey and kentucky and yeah 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 well i was i was born in newark and i i, I until i was a little kid i lived in Bergen county but yeah i grew huh? up in south florida is that where you are well, no, but you're a Jersey boy. <laughs> yeah, I guess, sort of, yeah. And and now I live in Kentucky, which is odd, but, like, I love it here. Uh, yeah, we had a, a Braun Army meetup, like, a year ago or, or more. It was February 2020 uh, in uh, in Miami or somewhere. But, yeah, it would be great to have another one of those or something in Boca. Boca's such a great town, and now that they have the gym uh, that you've been in, uh, I've, I've been in it, but I haven't trained in it, but it looks pretty fantastic. So awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, the, some of the machines are kind of funny because everybody, like I heard the story of everyone was putting it together themselves, like some of the, you know, call center stuff, but, mm -hmm. but it's a great gym. I, PJ picked like the best pieces. So yeah. I had fun being out there, trying to stay on track, but not really with the diet, but with the exercise. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, it, it, it's a great place and, and, and uh, you know, the HQs is pretty spacious. And so, yeah, it'd be a great place to do something like that. So. You know, maybe we can get that get that going. And I know people would come, like for the Brown Army meetup, people came from all over the country, you know, and it was a workout and uh, and it was great. It was really cool. Guy Sister Nino was there and, mm -hmm. and some other people. So yeah, that I think that'd be awesome. But um, but I want to thank you very much. I uh, like the shoe fairy joined and that's very cool. So, hey, Alexa. <laughs> so I think, and again, like just to, just to say one last time, the shoe fairy, everyone's heard that name, amazing brand recognition. And, you know, I just think that the fact that you were involved with them and now you're involved with Blackstone, it's a win-win. We're so happy to have you if you're going to do fantastic work. So for uh, Rachel Connect, this is Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you.